Morning is Pastor Larry Allison, Gospelite, uh, Free Will Baptist, and Bon Terre on this Saturday morning. We're real glad you've joined us uh, today. Um, we're going to finish this up this morning. We've kind of had a little three day uh, series uh, on what would have to change or what could we do practical uh, that would help renew us and get us closer to the Lord, possibly with a spirit of revival. And we saw the difference that 50 days made, the difference that 50 days could make. We began by seeing a church that uh, was absolutely not ready for revival. Remember, their fellowship was marred with petty bickering. Well, they was all arguing who's the greatest among them. <laughs> Leaders slept in time of crisis. Jesus is praying in the garden and they're sleeping. The church treasure sells Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Peter, the church spokesman, he denies Christ openly before the enemies uh, three times. And then the church uh, literally scatters everywhere. Those are the reasons the church was not ready for revival. But listen, 50 days later, praise the Lord. Well, what a difference 50 days made. You know what? Judas is now dead. Sin is out of the camp. Peter has repented, and he's in a right right relationship with the Lord and will be, become a great leader for the church. The scattered flock is now together. Listen, they are now together. Uh, they are. It is a consistent pattern of, of revival for people to be together in harmony, in unity, uh, loving the Lord and loving each other, all right? Uh, I mean, there was no more strife, no more bickering. Man, they are together, in, and they had prayer. Man, they was having a prayer meeting, and they was waiting on God, and God sent them a miraculous power, power to witness, uh, to share Christ, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. So we saw that 50 days later, they was ready for revivals. What a difference 50 days can make between death and life. What a difference 50 days made between defeated and victory. This morning, our title of our devotion is the victory of renewal. I mean, talk about victory. Anytime we there's renewal, and, and and we're getting closer to the Lord, uh, understand this, please. That is victory. <laughs> Man, that's something to shout about. That's something to be thankful about. That's something to praise the Lord about. You know, and here's a few things I'm going to share with you this morning on this Saturday morning. Will not be long. I try to go a little shorter on Saturdays because, you know, Saturday's busy, a lot going on. Uh, but let me just share these few things with you. If you are to have revival, It'll be because you decide to do certain things that will enhance the opportunity to get closer to the Lord. First of all, if you've got any unconcern in your life at all about serving the Lord, uh, laziness or unconcern or just uh, not, not really into it, you know what? You will repent of that neglect. You want to have revival? You want to have renewal? You must repent uh, of the neglect and unconcern that may be in your heart this morning. If you've got hidden sin in your life, and you may be like Aiken and some of these others back then that thought, well, nobody knows about it. Listen to me, God knows about it. And if you've got any kind of hidden sin going on in your life today, you must repent of that. You will never have revival in your soul and renewal in your relationship with Christ as long as you're hanging on to hidden sin. Sin separates you from God. So there must be repentance. These are all practical things to do. Repent from your neglect. Be forgiven. Repentance. Get the sin out of your get the sin out of the camp, okay? Get the sin out of your heart. Prayer. What what's what's something else you can be practical about to help bring renewal? Pray more. Spend time with God. You say, well, I already pray. What's wrong with praying more? Spend some time with God in prayer every day and possibly even different times uh, throughout the day. You know what? And you'll put aside, like that church did, they had to do some changing. They put aside all petty bickering and they joined themselves together in unity, in harmony, and in one accord. 
And you know what? If you've lost your joy and your victory, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to get your victory back. You're going to pray until you get your joy back. You're going to seek the Lord and you're going to want to serve him well. Now, here is some of the results that happen. Or should I say these are the results that follow having a real spirit of revival. If there's a spirit of revival in your heart and even in the church, here's about five things that I think will happen. First of all, revival will bring a new sensitivity to sin. You will see sin as what it really is, exceedingly sinful. I believe when you get close to the Lord, remember we saw about giving the living sacrifice yesterday, one of, the, one of the conditions of that was to give ourselves holy. And holy, H-O-L-Y. And so we, we want to we wanna hate sin. We, I believe revival will bring a new sensitivity to sin. You'll hate sin. You'll want to flee from sin. You will want to repent of sin. You, you Listen, I believe you'll do everything you can to have a new, you will really begin seeing sin as the way God sees it, exceedingly sinful. Revival will do that for you. Secondly, I believe revival will bring a new love for the Lord. It'll bring a new devotion to Christ. <laughs> so I already love him. I understand that. I believe, and I believe Christians, in, in some way or another, all Christians must love the Lord surely when they got saved and they accepted him and he saved them. Praise the Lord. But what, but what is wrong with having a new devotion for your love for Christ? What, what, is, what is long, wrong with rekindling that love for him? Uh, I believe real revival will bring a new love for the Lord Jesus Christ, a real genuine devotion to the Lord. Thirdly, I believe revival will bring a new faithfulness to the church. I believe there'll be a loyalty between you and the house of God. I, I, I believe folks get, some people get to the place, they can kind of take it or leave it. They take God's house lightly. And, and I know right now we've got some folks that are home with bad health and they're watching services online and they're trying to be safe with the COVID thing that's going on. Out. And I understand that completely. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you've lost your de desire for the house of God, uh, then you need revival in your soul. I believe revival will bring a new faithfulness to the church, a, a new loyalty to the house of God. It's God's house. And oh, we belong assembled together. Fourthly, revival will bring a new love for the brethren. I think you'll love each other. You say, I already love everybody. Hey, love them more, <laughs> right? I mean, revival will bring a new love for the brethren. That unity, that fellowship, that harmony, it will just be better and better and better. Fifthly, revival will bring a new concern for the lost. Soul winning soul conscious. You do all, you'll start doing things to try to bring other people to the saving knowledge of Jesus. You'll start praying for lost folks. You'll start witnessing the lost folks. I mean, revival will give you a new concern for the lost. I mean, today I could ask my church family, hey, do you believe in soul winning? And I know everybody in the church would say, amen, preacher. But, uh, but if I would say, how many of you went soul winning this week? How many of you really shared Christ with a lost soul this week? I think the amens would go way, way down, okay? So revival, it'll change you. It'll give you a new concern for the lost. You'll, you'll realize you are your brother's keeper, and you ought to be concerned about his soul and his salvation. I, I just believe that real revival can really bring about some wonderful things in the individual, and in the local body of believers in the church. Oh, God bless you. Hey, 50 days sure made a big difference for them back then. And you know what? Uh, I don't think it'd take 50 days for us to make the right changes in our own lives. Let's get serious about the Lord. Let's get serious about revival. Let's get serious about renewal. And these are some of the practical things you can do, I think, that'll make that happen. God bless you. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we come to you just now in Jesus' name. 
And Lord, I pray that, Lord, this really has spoke to the hearts of our church family, maybe many others watching. Lord, the need of revival. And Lord, we just don't need to agree on we need revival and, and just pray for revival and do nothing about it. Lord, there is some practical things we can do that I believe will, really will draw us ever closer to you. Oh, Lord, we want to be renewed. We want to be alive in Jesus, alive and well, and serving you very well. So, God, would you bless today. We're praying already for a great day tomorrow. It's the Lord's Day. And as we assemble in the morning and tomorrow evening, God bless us with some great services, we pray. And we thank you already. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Have a great Saturday. Let me mention this. Uh, one of our brothers in Christ, he has uh, he's won the victory, Carter Bobkin. And he went home to be with the Lord. And we are having his memorial service this afternoon at the church, 2 o'clock this afternoon. So uh, many of you may want to attend that. Others of you, if you're not able, just be praying for the family. Be praying the Lord bless them and encourage them and and, and really strengthen them in, in these days. But that memorial service for Carter Botkin, that's this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Now remember, tomorrow Sunday, <laughs> hey, praise the Lord. It's the Lord's day. And, and tomorrow, uh, remember, 9 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Man, let's have some church. God bless you.